Hello, uh, welcome back to our uh, e-sectiona program. So this is Professor Uma Rao bringing you the lectures on electrical power quality under the e-sectiona program of uh, VTU. So we are dealing with the fifth module and in the last two lectures, I uh, spoke about the indices developed for power quality benchmarking. So we are de dealing with benchmarking. So in this session, we will look about power quality state estimation. First, let us be clear about what is the meaning of estimation. See, there are two ways you can get information on a parameter. So like in power systems, it is mainly all the electrical parameters like voltage, current, power, etc. One way is by making a measurement, right? So I'll have to measure whatever quantities I want by putting an instrument. So I have to make a measurement. An alternative way is uh, to estimate it, right? That means I make, I use some method and make an estimate of what could, what would be the value. So with this, method, I don't need the measuring instrument. But please understand one thing, I cannot estimate everything because then I don't have any data on it. So, in general state estimation problems, not only in power systems, in general state estimation problem, what we do is, we make what are called as measurements. Okay. Then using these measurements, we make an estimate of variables which have not been measured. So what you have to be clear is that measurements are required. I need measurements. Only thing is, if I want to measure all the variables of interest, then my measuring instruments may become too much and data collection would become a problem. So we try to minimize the measurements so that with knowledge of these measured variables, I can make an estimate of all other variables that are not measured also. Yeah, that's the problem of estimation. So now here we know that we know how the power quality indices are uh, defined. They are basically defined based on harmonics and on voltage deviations, both magnitude and the duration of the voltage deviations. We'll just see how what is the uh, methodology of estimating the power quality. So what are all the issues? Uh, here. First is, as it is now, a lot of power quality monitors have been installed and they are operable in many of the distribution networks. However, there is a large gap in the coverage of distribution feeders. See, those feeders will be very lengthy, you know, 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers and so on. So, uh, I can't measure at every point of interest. So, there is a gap between the measurement and the need. So, I can estimate the voltages at different locations without monitors, given the data at maybe one or more monitors, right? So, EPRI has developed a very good power quality uh, state estimator model and uh, using this, the feeder models and recorded data are used to estimate what would have been recorded at the consumer side. That means I'm not actually recording. See, I can't install a power quality meter at every consumer premise. That would be virtually impossible. Okay, so we'll think of the transformer, but then there are so many transformers at the lower level where they directly the output of the transformer is fed to the consumer. So I can't obviously install monitoring equipment at every point in the transformer also. Therefore, we try to use the estimates the measurements we have and try to make an estimate of uh, voltages at points where we don't have the measurements. Okay. So the general approach to estimation. So what is state estimation? I've already told you. We make a prediction or estimate of the state, in this case the voltage. So one very popular method used in uh, estimation is called as the WLS, weighted least square approach. So here what we do is, we try to minimize the square of the error. 
what is error error is the difference between the actual value and the measured value or the actual value and whatever measured or estimate value in this case we are estimating so i try to minimize that error so it is actually wls method is a kind of an optimization technique so we will not go into the details of the technique as such we will do a qualitative discussion on on the process of um, estimation so since power quality is primarily a distribution system problem the main concern here is all the load related steady state voltages and currents throughout the fields okay it is very difficult to make an estimate of harmonics very difficult because harmonics are very random and very dependent on the nature of the load however we can make an estimate for voltages so what is this weighted least square method as i told you i'll just present the simple uh, mathematical approach without going into the details so what we have is this look at the first system equation i have z is equal to h of x plus v right what are these uh, variables we will see z is the measured variable z is the measured variable x is equal to state variables x is equal to state variables h of x is the function relating state variables to measurements and v is the measurement error there is always an error in measurement so what is my optimization problem see z is the parameter i have actually measured x is the total number of variables system state variables z will be less than x if i am measuring all x then i don't need any estimation if i measure all x i don't need any estimation so z is less than x the number of measurements is less than the number of state variables so i have a function h relating the state variables to the measurements and v is some measurement error there are ways to model the error random noise and all that you can model so minimize x sigma over wi wi is a weight a weight is a number okay zi minus hi of x whole square see zi is the actual measurement hi x is what i am estimating so the difference is the error so i minimize the error square for all all the measurements over all the measurements clear now all my measurement may not be accurate see there are some instruments which are if you want them to be very accurate they are very expensive so somewhere in installing the measurement devices we make a trade off between cost and accuracy right if i know that the instrument is of higher accuracy then i give it a higher weight so instruments of lower accuracy we make it less we give it a lesser weight so this minimization if you see this is the objective function objective function and there are different objective uh, optimization algorithms to minimize the objective function so this is the problem of weighted least squares so this is very popularly used in estimating the power quality voltages for example a sag occurs at a point in a field right i make an using this sag value i make an estimate of what would be the sag further downstream the field where i have not put a monitoring instrument okay so i may have the sag at the substation and there may be four feeders going out from the substation so if i know the sag at the substation i try to make an estimate of what would be the sag at the end of the feeders so this is this is the meaning of estimate so what are all the issues here let us see the first one is lack of measurements in critical areas is a problem if you cannot have good measurements your estimates also will not be correct right so i should know where should i put the minimum monitoring 
equipment. See, supposing there are 100 state variables of interest, right? And I want to put 60 instruments or 50 instruments. Where should I put this 50 instruments? So out of the 100, which 50 should I measure and which 50 should I estimate? Which of these measurements are critical? So if I don't put a monitoring on um, monitoring equipment at the critical areas, then my estimations may not be correct. Okay. And uh, we may have to use some kind of an intuitive rule to get the best results. When, because here we are talking of a large number of variables, not, not five or 10. Okay. So power quality means it is, I'm interested in the power quality in, at all the end users premises. So the number of variables is really large. So we may have to have some simple thumb rules, what we call to come at the best results. Now a very high accuracy is not needed because you remember when we saw the thresholds for voltage sag, for example, the thresholds were 90, 70, 50, 10. So we discussed why all these thresholds uh, have come. So if I have a sag of 55% or 65%, both will fall in less than 70 category. Both 65 and 55 will fall in less than 70 category. So my, what do I need? I need to know whether the SAG falls with in the category less than 90 or less than 70 or less than 50. I don't need to know exactly whether the SAG is 55% or 65%, etc. Clear? So I don't need an exact estimate. So accuracy is not of much importance because the thresholds have a wide range. So the model proposed by EPRI for estimation, what it does is it divides the system into number of segments. It divides the system into number of segments. And the, we assume that in a particular segment, the power quality is issue is a constant. That means I have a segment. If I'm, if I'm estimating SAG, I assume that all consumers in that segment experience the same SAG. This is obviously to reduce the number of variables. As I said, we can't even if you take a small residential layout, you may have thousands of uh, residences. So I can't keep on estimating. There's no need also. Okay, this is one thing. And uh, segmentation, I do it based on where I have switches, where, where the breakers will open, and where I have placed monitors, which measurements are available, and so on. Okay. And once we know an event has occurred, event is when a deviation, a power quality problem has occurred, this model, it's a simulation actually, will try to simulate different events that might have caused the disturbance. For, the, for example, a SAG has occurred. So why did this SAG occur? I tried to simulate suddenly a, an overload, okay, or a sudden motor starting, or a single line to ground fault. So like that, we try to simulate and whichever gives the best results, we take that as the cause of the disturbance and those estimates as authentic. Clear? So these are all some of the issues involved in estimation. So look at this figure. So here uh, we have, so we have a number of monitors. So this is a feeder, this is a substation. So we have different breakers, okay? And this is a feeder. I have placed some current monitors at some locations in the feeders. And then the feeder PQ monitoring is there at each feeder, at the entrance of each feeder. And some customers have a PQ. This is just random, just to give you the idea. There are some uh, monitoring equipment at some of the customers' premises, not all of them. So you see, I am not placing a monitor throughout the network. I am placing it at some points. Then I divide it into segments. All these uh, are shown, you know, these circles. These are all segments. So I make an estimate of the voltage here. So I assume, my assumption here is the voltage throughout the segment is a constant, is same. So whatever power quality disturbance is experienced by one consumer or one point in the segment is experienced by all the other points in the segment also. This is to simplify the estimation process. This is what is done. So this is the first issue. How do I make the segment? Okay. 
The second issue is how many monitors do I place? So there are some feeders which have two, three monitors. There are some feeders which has only one monitor at the substation. Actually, one monitor is sufficient to make an estimate. But sometimes what happens when I have a distortion on the secondary side of the transformer, which is, which is connected to the consumer, you know that in a transformer, whatever happens on the secondary is, is reflected on to the primary, right? So if we add just one more monitor, then the estimation accuracy will improve. That means instruct, if I have a substation, I have a primary and a transformer. So the secondary is connected to the consumer. So if I can put one more monitor on the secondary side of the transformer, experience tells that this will uh, improve the estimation. So where, sh where, sh where should it be located? So approximately the studies reveal that it should be located at half or two thirds after the secondary of the transformer along the feeder. That means I have one monitor on the substation and another on the secondary side of the transformer along the feeder halfway. That means there is considerable distance between the two monitors. So this has been found to improve the accuracy. So the estimator found what the model, what the estimator which EPRI developed, it was found that with, with the addition of just one more meter, the fault location could be identified correctly. Okay. And with only one monitor, sometimes the model gave erratic results for the location of the fault. This is because two different locations two different locations of faults on the consumer side can have the same effect on the feeder or, or on the feeder substation. Are you clear? So the faults on the secondary side of two different feeders, they can be reflected and show a similar effect on the primary side that is in the substation. So if I locate just one monitor in the substation, I may not be able to selective, get selectivity and correctly get and make an estimate of the fault location. So what EPRI has said that if we have three monitors along each feeder, one at the substation and two at the feeder levels, it gives excellent coverage and most of the faults can be located accurately and the estimate of the power quality, that is the voltage deviations, is accurate. This is what their finding shows. So we'll just see here what happens with different monitoring. So if I place a monitor only at the substation, this is okay if all the customers on the feeder see the same voltage. Okay, all the customers on the feeder see the same voltage. But this will fail if I have tappings in between and different customers see different voltage. Or from the cell substation, one, there may be one feeder, one customer may tap at 11 kV, another customer may tap at 66 kV. So in such cases, having just one monitor at the substation is not adequate. Okay, then substation plus customer side monitors. I, I place one monitor at the customer side. So the accuracy of prediction of voltages along the feeder is improved if the customer sites are significantly downline from the substation. That means, you know, they're at the end, radially at the end. However, it is still difficult to predict the fault location accurately since the fault current path is not known. I don't know which path the current will take because I'm not monitoring the current through the feeder. So exact location of the fault is not possible. So what is done is I have substation monitor plus PQ monitors on the main three-phase feeder branches, on the main branches of the feeder. So more than two monitors. So this should yield more accurate results and it improves the capabilities gained by adding customer side. So along with this, you also have customer side monitors. So 
there is no thumb rule to say you in this you put one or two or three or you put a, put put it in three customer premises you put it along three feeders two feeders no there is no thumb rule these are just guidelines so we have to take a decision based on the network based on the voltage levels based on the number of consumers connected etc so next is estimation of rms variations so this is done as i told you using the least squared methods so i measure i measure with existing monitors i estimate at all the other places also then i have a relationship between h of x i have relationship between the state variable and the measured variables and then i keep iterating till i keep iterating on what i keep iterating on the estimated values i keep iterating on the estimated value so there are standard procedures for that as i told you oh, i keep iterating on the on the estimated values till such time that the estimated value matches the measurement which we have taken then i can assume that on all the other buses where i have not measured the estimated values are accurate see what this means is this let us say i want 100 variables so instead of monitoring 100 i am monitoring only 50 okay now these 50 voltages are a function of all the other 100 voltages or or all the function of all the 100 voltages so here z is 50 measurements is 50 x state variable is 100 so z depends on h of x it will depend on all all the 100 state variables so i make an initial estimate some random estimate i make and then using some methods i minimize the error right now what i do is what is my error i keep matching at the 50 locations where i have measured i keep matching the measured value and estimated value measured value and estimated value i i take a error square and then i iterate on the estimation still this error square is minimized below some threshold okay so what do i have now at the end i have 100 estimates 50 have been measured and the estimated values of these 50 have very closely match the measured values so i end up with the conclusion that the remaining 50 that i have estimated but not measured are correct correct readings that means if i put a monitor in those 50 locations they will read the value i have estimated that's the meaning okay so we can do it by brute force or uh, that means if you if you have only one monitor you can try out again and again again and again or some intelligent uh, algorithms can be used wherein you can narrow down the segments to identify the fault location and use that for the estimate so so you see here there are two monitoring currents so looking at these fault currents i draw an area okay i draw an area what does this mean this means that my fault is somewhere within this area to give rise to these fault currents so i don't then i stop my search in other segments i am not interested in other segments because they are not affected they are not affected so i don't i don't use the variables in the other segment for my optimization because optimization has to be done quickly right i may need to take a control action so once we see the fault monitors in some then this will narrow down you can draw a segment and narrow down the search for your fault location okay and then make an estimate only of that particular area so customer side monitors can be very helpful but we saw it costs money monitoring putting monitoring monitoring costs money monitors everywhere so what are the some some of the problems with rms variations if the transformer is not grounded yy then what you see on the primary side uh, may be different for, and uh, for the customers for each of the customers so the monitored values on the primary side may not represent the exact voltages so when we design an rms 
estimator, we have to take into connection the transformers connection. Star delta, delta star, star grounded, delta, delta star grounded, what, what, what it is. The reason is, I think you all know, the ground provides the path for the neutral currents to flow. So it will affect the way the faults affect the system. For example, a single line to ground fault, if the, if the neutral is not grounded, does not have a path only for the fault current. So you will not get a correct, correct uh, estimate, right? So we have to be careful about that. And another problem is what is called as the facing problem. That means the utility would have installed meters in say RYB faces, um, presuming some load is connected to R and some to Y and some to B. Now, on the customer side, they may interchange the loads. That means they may change the phases. For example, take an industry. I have RYB. Okay. So, the industry has connected all their light, lighting load in uh, phase B. So, the utility side has placed their monitors and then have, they have developed a model, everything assuming lighting is in phase B and drives are in phase A. Now, after some time, for some years, the industry infrastructure changes and they find it's not convenient uh, and they shift all the lighting load to phase R. So there is a phase, a utility doesn't know about it. Okay, so this should be periodically checked. This is one uh, issue that can happen. And the transformer impedance will alter the voltage measure for some events because impedance affects the fault currents and so the estimate may be different from the actual uh, value. And uh, if I put a monitor at the customer premise, or if I estimate the value at the customer premise, it will give me only for that particular load, right? For the entire feeder, it may be difficult to get the PQ indices. So I have to judiciously place the monitors and uh, setting up communication links to get data directly that is smart communication is very expensive and will cost a lot of money okay these are some some of the issues next if i build a simulator for estimation what all the features that should be present in the simulator so this is obtained from the epri model of the simulator one is it should be able to model the three-phase feeder in full detail. Here, that model must be possible. And uh, normally feeders we represent by a short model, RL. It's an RL model. We don't, we don't normally at the distribution level, we don't model the capacitance of the line. The second is the representation of the load. That should be done correctly. If the load that is, there are different models for the load. We have polynomial models. And then we have uh, dynamic models where I take into account the, the dynamic nature of the load. If I want to model, uh, say, induction motors, there are thermostat models where uh, temperature sensitive load may have to be modeled along with that sensitivity and so on. So the way we represent the load is important in the simulation tool or engine as it's called, which we build. And the Simulation tool should quickly scan through different possible faults because I'm doing an estimation. I should try out all the possible and therefore the computation time is important. And only a few transformers we model explicitly, okay, with the connections. It may not be necessary at all places. Otherwise, I can simply model the transformer as an RX, simple, like a line. But where it is necessary, the three-phase transformers, I have to take into account the modeling of the connections and lumping of the loads. I can't represent each load individually. So if I have an industry, I can't go on modeling all of them. Or in a feeder, if four industries are connected, uh, it may be useful and it may reduce the modeling complexity to clump, lump all these four industries and model it as one unit. Okay, if I have thousand houses connected, I, I can just take it as a lumped load and model it with some characteristics. That is called as lumping. And there are different ways the loads can be lumped. There are standard load models. And we try to fit, fit the coefficients in the model for, for the uh, given network. So these are all some of the issues when you build a power quality simulator. Okay. 
So in this uh, session, uh, my main focus was on um, estimation and uh, how the estimation can be improved, how we place the monitors, and what are some of the issues when we do the estimation. Thank you.